What's up guys, Mikagi's deck profile is finally here. I've been working on this deck for so long because I know a lot of people were like super hyped for it, but I didn't want to put out like something that wasn't what I really really thought was going to do well because I know it's going to be one of the decks that are going to be played uh, more heavily during like the actual competitive season. Uh, the deck is just really really good just because of the ruler itself. The main deck just really kind of helps your ruler really like get a good position in the game so your opponent just can't do anything. Uh, for any of those that haven't really looked into Mikage and don't know what he does, uh, what makes this card so good is his last ability which is to pay one darkness and it says this card deals 100 damage to target resonator, put a blood counter on this card. Uh, this effect is not once per turn, you can do it as many times as you want, you get to like tag your opponent's whole field every single time you have mana open, you can pick off one of the resonators and then he even gets a blood counter and um, if you're wondering what the blood counter does, it of course goes with his J ruler side which is... Not only 900-900, which is actually like really not that bad, but he's also imperishable and flying, which is also really good because that means if he swings, it's really hard for your opponent to block him. And then his effects are you can remove a blood counter, and um, there's multiple effects. So you can either uh, a target J Resonator loses 100-100 until the end of turn, a this card gains 200 attack until end of turn or you gain 200 life or you can put a plus one plus one counter on a target vampire so um a vampire resonator so you can't put the counters on himself but uh the reason why <clears throat> excuse me i think i'm like getting sick again for like the million times so my throat's kind of dying but it might just be because it's early in the morning but we'll see um i have been feeling a little like flimsy but anyway so um what makes this so crazy is the 200 pump effect. So essentially, uh, the entire deck is a very, very slow stall deck. You sit behind all your mana and do absolutely nothing. And then once you have a bunch of blood counters, you can deactivate. If you swing for a clear attack, you can literally do 4,000 damage in one swing. I've actually won so many games doing that that it's just like not even funny. But the fact that you're... Um, you're able to tag everything for 100 just endlessly makes it so that even if you never deactivate, it just doesn't matter. Like, if you have that effect on your ruler side, you just have such a big advantage. Like, it just doesn't matter. There was a stone back in the day called Goose Ballesta, the Ceiling Stone. It was uh, pay itself as a cost you tap it in another Darkness Stone to give something minus 200 defense. So essentially, you pay 2 to do minus 200, and you have to tap both. With this ruler, you pay 2 to do 200, and then you can do it more, and he even gains blood counters for it that give him uh, multiple effects. It's just so good. And then in terms of uh, mana, I went with uh, 4 Dark Depths because I still really, really wanted Space Time Anomaly. I wanted uh, really heavy removal for the field and the hand because I felt as though, mainly for the hand because Mikage already handles the field, but I wanted some draw power with some like heavier removal. Uh, Space Time Anomaly hits J Rulers too, so I thought it'd be really good, so I wanted to play the blue. I have uh, 3 Scorch Bales. Uh, Scorch Bales is also really good just because of Demon Flame, uh, tagging something for 100 and then using Demon Flame is just too good, but I literally only run Demon Flame as my only red card, and so I felt comfortable having only 3 red, not to mention I only have 3 copies of it, so it's not that bad. And then 3 of, uh, Heaven's Rift, uh, I literally only have one light card in my entire deck, and it's a one of, it's Manifestation of Power, I believe it's called, uh, it's the one that destroys an addition or recovers a card. Uh, you need to have addition hate in this deck because if your opponent uses uh, shackles of ice, you just completely lose. I mean, you can still play around it with the main deck. It just becomes really hard to actually deal with their field because there is a lot of discard in this deck. And so discard always feels flat because when you attack their hand too much, if they've already established a good board, uh, it doesn't really do anything anymore. So in normally in, in this version of the deck, you attack their hand and then Mikage can just pick off their field, so it's totally fine. But if they stop you from picking off their field, you're left with a lot of discards and it's kind of harder to get some field removal down. So, especially with cards like Demon Flame, you can't tag them for 100 anymore. So I'm only meaning the one addition hate because I didn't want to focus on it too much, but I wanted the stones to be able to side into it. So the three light is mainly here so you can side stuff like Blessed Holy Wolf or Safeguard of the Royal Palace or uh, more Manifestations if you want to play that one. I felt as though Manifestation was the base, best main deck one because it recovers a resonator and draws a card. So it doesn't like really like, you don't lose a card and you may be able to like swing again with like a Melder. So I figured just meaning that would be fine and then the stones are there for the sake of uh, siding in more.
And then for the main deck, uh, the like best, best, just best card of this entire deck is Taro. Uh, this card says when it enters the field, you destroy a target damage resonator. Uh, that's really, really easy to do, of course, because you just tag something for 100 and kill it. Your opponent can literally just have a Gwyber out, and before your recovery, you just go 100 damage, recover, summon Taro, kill the Gwyber. It just doesn't matter. This card is really, really just insane in this deck like it was good in lunia and it's even better in this deck it just does so much it's the best removal card the deck has and then for reza uh stealth was too good not to play in this deck i was trying to avoid it at first because i didn't want to use stealth in every dark deck i was playing but it's just too good of a mechanic and it specifically works a little better in this deck than most decks because reza lets you lose a thousand life and there's times where you actually can't use another reza because you're only at a thousand or like 800 or something but now it's not so bad because mikage can there's been times where i flipped him and remove the blood counters to heal 200 life for each and i'll heal like 1400 because i have like seven blood counters so it's just really good to be able to like control your life and it doesn't feel like i'm too scared of like lightning strikes or some kind of burn damage when i actually have like some um way to actually heal a really big amount all at once and then three melder um Melder is really good at four most of the time, but I've been trying I've been trying to avoid playing four of it lately. It just in a deck like this where you really want to see all your discard cards first, I wanted Riza to be like the main tutor card of the deck, and then all the other stealth cards would just kind of come through Riza, except for Executioner because you could play it so early. But it just seemed like three would be totally enough because I'd rather just keep the mana open to keep destroying stuff or using discard cards anyway. So this was kind of more of like a late game play and I didn't feel the need to see any more of it too early. Especially when just Riza grabs it anyway. And then uh, for Executioner, uh, this card is just like one of the best dark cards in the entire game. Uh, being able to just stop most aggro decks, not to mention just remove a card is really good. Uh, attacking for 3 is also kind of big in this deck because there's been a lot of times where I've like attacked for 3 and they've blocked. Or they haven't blocked because they know I have enough mana to tag the rest of their life down. So it's just like you get to squeeze in some extra damage so Mikage doesn't have to do so much work. And then just one underground dragger. Um, there are certain scenarios where I actually prefer this over setting a melder at the end of turn with Riza. Just like scenarios where it, it's not like often but there's times where like let's say your opponent has like a Christy that like blew up one of your cards and they're playing Feetsing so their Christy has like six mana open at that turn or they have like a bunch of sacred elves and if you meld her she can just pump to avoid the destruction. Uh, scenarios like that I like setting an underground dragger because then it's just like a, a guaranteed destruction on the Christy opposed to like trying to use the melder to kill it if you don't have enough stealth cards. It's just like there's those every now and chance moments where this just feels like a better card so i just played one so i can set it with uh reza if i needed to and um that's actually all the creatures uh, i didn't really focus too much on the resonators just because you don't really need to every time you have mana open and nothing to play you're just killing their entire field anyway and just getting closer to otking them so it really doesn't matter so for the spells i have just one Leviton. Uh, Leviton is just really good in this deck. I didn't want to focus on playing too many because, I, like I said, I want to focus on just the deck playing the way it's supposed to play. But um, if I draw into this with like a space time anomaly or something, it's really good. If you open it, I'd, I'd probably just keep it if I had the other four cards being really good too, or if I know I can build a good hand. Because unless your opponent nameless misses this, you just drop it when you're about to win and you win. You never play this card in the beginning, by the way. If you open this card, don't just play it for the sake of playing it. You don't want your opponent to know you have it. You just there's been times where I literally get like 20 blood counters and then go activate Leviton, J-activate, uh, remove all 20 of the game, 4,000 attack swing and you die. And it's just like you just instantly win. So you don't want your opponent to know that you're going to have that play. If they end up nameless missing and they have to hit this card, it's still better than hitting like uh, Scorn or one of your spells. So it doesn't really matter if you lose it. It's not like necessary. It's just really nice. And then three space time anomaly. Uh, I was gonna play four of this, but I play another blue card as well, and I only had four blue stones, so I didn't want to get too crazy with it. Uh, three's been totally fine. I wish I could fit the fourth one, but I really didn't want to get greedy and get kind of color screwed. Like there's games where like you might hit like black white black white black red, and then you can't use an anomaly. So I didn't want to double up on it. And then same with Demon Flame, I'm only playing three. Uh, I didn't want to get too crazy with the colors because I wanted to focus mainly on the black just in case I was going to get color screwed because the mana for this deck is a little bit more different than the other ones. Uh, I just wanted to make sure I had 10 black stones so that I can abuse this effect as much, which gave me a lot less space for the other colors. And then 3 Prison. Um, <clears throat> 
excuse me, this card has actually been really, really good in this deck. Uh, its biggest weakness for this deck is Captain Hook. If your opponent can get a Captain Hook off randomly before you actually get all your discard cards off, it's actually going to set you back really, really far. Um, it's not like you're going to lose guaranteed because you still have so much like low drop removal, like a Tagging and Demon Flame or something, but it does get really, really frustrating. So Prison's kind of the solution to something like Captain Hook, but it also works really good against cards like Christie. It's really good against like the Mirror because their Reezes and stuff can get countered too. It's just a really, really good card and Reza can set it from your deck as well. So that's just a complete plus. And then the Scorn of Dark Alice. <clears throat> I've never played so much discard hate until this deck and I didn't realize how just insane four Scorns and four Nameless Mist feels in a deck like this. Um, you literally just like, there was so, I was playtesting with one of my friends and he was playing Feetsing and it was a build that was really close to the one I posted so I know I was comfortable with the list. I know it's like a really good list and it was just so hard for him to do anything because there was a time where he had like, uh, I think it was like a Captain Hook and a Seal of Wind and Light and something else and I just went like Nameless Mist, take out the Seal and then scorn the Captain Hook. And then there was another game where I also played four of Lapis's Dark Storm because I'm just like crazy about taking out their hand. And um, there was a game where I, I sealed, I mean, I nameless misted their seal. He had two cards left in hand and I used Lapis's Dark Storm. He lost his whole hand. And so he had like a few like mana dorks and like tokens on the field. And eventually I was just like 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, and just like killed everything. And then space time anomalies were still in my hand. I still had like so many answers, but typically what, why I don't play uh, this many discards in every darkness deck is because like I said earlier if you focus too much on a hand You can't get over their established field But in this deck it just doesn't matter because they can't establish a field if you have Mikage on the field It's just he's too easy removal. He's too consistent There's only one counter in the whole game to it Which is shackles and if they're not maining it it means you most likely already won game one So if you're siding you're in a good position anyway it's just this the strategy to just attack their hand in this deck is just really, really good. And uh, I don't know typically how to counter it too well. Just because Nameless Mist hitting counters is so, so strong that it's just like they're never going to have the answer to counter your stealth monsters. And stealth monsters put so much like removal and damage on board that it just makes you win. And then one manifestation of power, uh, like I said, this is mainly for the addition hate. I just wanted to have at least one main deck answer to it because I really, really feel like people are going to start maining uh, uh, Shackles and Feetsing decks because it's the only thing that really stops this deck. And this is one of the bigger decks this format. So I wanted to have at least one main deck answer to it and I'll side more. And then just the one Black Moonbeam. Uh, I still wanted to have like a main just like one shot answer to killing uh, J Rulers. I didn't want to like not have this at all, I, even though like he can do it really well too. It just never really hurts, but I've, I've been really liking Black Moonbeam this format. It just feels uh, really easy to get rid of stuff like Zero and whatnot. So um, I, I always kind of, if I have the Black Board, I'm always going to play it. I just really like Black Moonbeam. So I hope you guys enjoyed the deck profile. I've been putting off Mikage for the longest now. I know you guys have been like dying in anticipation, so I really hope you like this version of the deck. I really would suggest trying it out because it's just so good. I just was blown away of how much pressure I felt I had. The one for ones from all the uh, discard cards, like the Scorns and the Nameless Mist, just feel like an even trade and then you get so much free removal that it just doesn't matter. Uh, I'm really, really fond of this deck. I'm actually gonna be trying to like think of counters to it now just because it seems really good. And so I hope you guys do enjoy it. Um, if you do have any questions about it though, if anything was unclear, always feel free to comment in the comment section below and ask me any questions you might have. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do because I still have the other four rulers coming really, really soon. I haven't decided which one I want to do next. I kind of want to do Yogg, but I've been thinking about kind of like the same kind of strategy with him because I realized like since he blows up the field, I can also attack the hand. So it might be something similar, but uh, we'll have to see. But um, definitely know, let me know what you guys think. Subscribe. And I'll catch you guys next time.